In this lecture, we're going to talk about how robotic spacecraft work. The solar system is the only place in the universe where we've been able to visit the subjects of interest. In one case, we were even able to send people. Astronauts explored the moon and brought back lunar rocks for laboratory study. In other cases, we've been able to study samples of distant worlds that have come to us as meteorites. The rest of the data comes from robotic spacecraft. We've sent spacecraft to all the terrestrial and Jovian planets, as well as to many moons, asteroids, and even comets. The spacecraft we send out have computers, power sources like solar cells or radioisotope thermoelectric generators, propulsion systems, and other instruments. They operate primarily with pre-programmed instructions, but they also carry radios that allow the spacecraft to communicate with controllers on Earth. Most robotic spacecraft make one-way trips and never physically return to Earth, but they send their data back from space in the same way that we would send radio or television signals. There are four major categories of robotic missions to other worlds, landers and probes, flybys, orbiters, and sample return missions. We'll talk a little bit about each. A flyby mission flies by a planet just once and then continues on its way. These missions tend to be less expensive to launch into space, and some flybys can even gain more value by visiting multiple planets. For example, Voyager 2, shown here, flew past Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune before continuing on its way out of our solar system. Flyby missions can also get an additional fuel savings by using the gravity of each planet along the spacecraft's path to help boost it onward to the next planet. This technique is known as a gravitational slingshot. It can bend the spacecraft's path and it can also speed it up by taking a small amount of the planet's orbital energy. Flybys generally carry small telescopes, cameras, and spectrographs. The equipment is brought relatively close to each object of interest, so the flyby craft can obtain much higher resolution images and spectra than even the largest telescopes on Earth or in Earth orbit. Also, flybys can get a, give us information that we couldn't get otherwise. For example, Voyager 2 helped us discover Jupiter's rings and learn about the rings of Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune through views in which the rings were backlit by the Sun. These views are only possible from beyond a planet's orbit. We can't see them from Earth. Spacecraft on flybys may also carry instruments that measure magnetic field strengths or sample interplanetary dust. Again, this data is impossible to get if we stay on Earth. Most of what we know about the masses and compositions of other planets' moons comes from flybys. The instrumentation on an orbiter is often similar to that on a flyby, but an orbiter can study another world for a longer period of time. The artwork shown here is of the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter in the process of aerobraking in order to get it in a lower orbit. Aerobraking saves fuel by using atmospheric drag to slow down the spacecraft. Landers and probes are sent to land on another world's surface or probe into the atmosphere of a Jovian planet. Several of our Mars landers have included rovers to explore wider areas of the surface. Uh, this includes the Spirit and Opportunity rovers that we landed on Mars in 2004 and the Curiosity rover that landed in August of 2012. The background image here is a self-portrait of the Curiosity rover. Sample return missions collect material from other worlds and return the material to Earth for study. The figure shown here is of the Stardust mission, which actually collected comet dust on a flyby and returned it to Earth in 2006. Many missions combine more than one type of spacecraft. For example, the Galileo mission to Jupiter included an orbiter that studied Jupiter and its moons as well as the probe that entered Jupiter's atmosphere. The Cassini-Huygens mission also contained both an orbiter and probe to land on Saturn's moon Titan. 
Telescopes will continue to play an important role in astronomy, certainly. But for a detailed look, you just can't beat actually going to the place you want to study. And in our solar system, that's possible. This is an artist's rendering of the New Horizons mission to Pluto. It's actually on its way to Pluto right now. It'll do a flyby of the Pluto system July 14th, 2015. I'll leave you here, possibly dreaming of visiting other worlds and our solar system and beyond.